Have you ever felt like you might be just a little too far gone? Like you've messed up a little bit too much, you've made too many mistakes that God couldn't possibly love you? Hey guys, Jeff here from That Bold Life, your weekly encouragement to help you live a bold life for Jesus. I hope you are having a great day. I want to share with you just a minute a passage of scripture that I read this week that really kind of stuck out to me. It's something, you know, I'd read before and I never paid a lot of attention to, but it's going to be the story of Rahab. I know I taught my youth on this on Wednesday and a lot of them had never heard of Rahab and I think that kind of can happen to us a lot of times because I've read Rahab's story but I can't say that I've ever really focused on it and I know I've never preached on it but reading through it and just suddenly seeing it through a different light, just seeing what God was able to do in that moment. I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis but if you want to read it yourself go over to Joshua 2 I believe starting around verse 15 we're going to kind of pick up this story. But a little bit of backstory, we're at the point where the Israelites are going and they're about to take on the city of Jericho. If you're not familiar with Jericho, it was this huge military force and going all the way up around it, they had a fortified wall that surrounded the cities. It looked like something out of Fortnite. It was huge. They said it was impenetrable. But that's where Joshua said he was going to start. Joshua says they're going to start and they're going to take on Jericho the greatest military power at this time in this, you know, land that they're in. And they go to Jericho and instead of, you know, taking it on head on, they send a couple spies inside. So the spies go in and this is where we meet Rahab for the very first time. It says this about the spies in Joshua 2. So the two men set out and came to the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there that night. Okay, so that's the very first time we hear about Rahab. And the very first thing we hear about Rahab is Rahab the prostitute. How would you like to be remembered like that? You know, oh, Rahab the prostitute or, or you know, Johnny the drunk or, you know, like, how would you like that, that to be your name in the Bible is Rahab the prostitute. So they come to Rahab the prostitute. They stay in her house that night and she actually saves them from being captured. She actually hides the Israelites from being caught by the uh, Jericho guards and they get out and what they do is they give her a scarlet thread and they say, if you hang the scarlet thread on the window you let us out of, you will be saved. And that obviously symbolizes the blood of Christ that saves us, that you know, when we put on the scarlet thread, when we put on the blood of Christ, we will be saved, we will be passed over. We, we know that signifies that, but they say to Rahab, you know, if you put this on your window, you will be saved. When we come in and take the city of Jericho, you will be saved. And I just, I thought that was very interesting that in the entire city of Jericho, God chose a prostitute to save. Do we get that? In the entire city, there had to be someone more righteous. There had to be someone smarter. There had to be someone prettier. There had to be someone that we would have chosen over a prostitute. But that got me thinking. God doesn't look at the same things that we look at when He chooses people. Actually, in 1 Samuel 16, we see God says this very thing. When He sends Samuel to pick the next king of Israel, Samuel goes in and he sees all these big buff brothers, you know, they're soldiers, and God says this to him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For the man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So we have to ask the question, why would God choose someone like Rahab? Why would God choose a prostitute? There had to be someone more righteous in all of Jericho, but God chose a prostitute named Rahab. You see, I think that's because God doesn't look at what man looks at. You see, because we would have walked in, if we were going to save someone, if we were going to choose someone in Jericho, we would have went to the leaders, we would have went to the smartest, we would have went to the ones who looked like they had it all together, and we would have chosen them because we look at outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And I want that to be an encouragement to you today that wherever you are, whatever you've done, whatever you've been through, regardless of what other people say about you, how bad friends talk about you, how bad you feel about yourself, God doesn't look at what man looks at. God looks at the heart. God chooses the unchosen. God chooses the Rahabs. God chooses those that are so messed up and so broken. That's who God chooses. You see, because I wasn't 
perfect. Up until the age of 21, I was not a Christian. If anything, I was going against God. I was fighting against God. I didn't live like there was a God. If you had asked me, I'd have probably told you I was a Christian, but my life did not reflect that. My values did not reflect that. Nothing I believed, acted, or said reflected those very things. I was unworthy to be a child of God, but God saved me. And not just spiritually, but God actually saved my life physically from a car accident I was in. God saved me, and why He chose to save a broken teenager, I don't know. But He did. He saved me, just like He did Rahab. I don't know how or why He chooses who He chooses, but He doesn't always come to the ones that man would choose. A lot of times He goes to the broken, to the imperfect, to the flawed, to the individuals that don't have it all together. But that's good news for you and me, because despite what the world says about us, and the world says to us, and the way the world makes us feel, maybe even the way we feel about ourselves, God doesn't look at what man looks at. God looks at the heart. God chooses the unchosen. God chooses the unpopular. God chooses the hated. That's who God comes for. Because something very interesting happens with Rahab. We read the story about Rahab and we see later on in Joshua in the scripture, after they do take Jericho, they do let Rahab come and join them and she basically becomes an honorary Israelite. But then we see something very interesting if we flip all the way over to the first book of the New Testament. We flip over to Matthew 1 into the genealogy of Jesus, you know, that, that long list of names that we usually skip over. If we flip over to that, we see something extremely interesting. It says this, This is a record of the ancestors of Jesus, the Messiah, a descendant of David and of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminadad. Aminadad was the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Notice that. In the genealogy of Jesus, something very unusual happens. There's actually three women named. Of those three women is Rahab the prostitute. Rahab, the prostitute. God chose someone whose very profession was sin, someone who had a messed up past, someone who had clearly made mistakes, had done wrong things. God used that person to bring forth his son who would come and save the world. I want that to be an encouragement to you today. Regardless of what you've done or what you've said or how messed up you are, how messed up you've been and the things you've done, you are never too far gone. You cannot get so far outside of the love of God that he'll never bring you back. In fact, when you mess up and when you sin, he knew that while he hung on the cross and he loved you anyway. He loves you despite your flaws. He loves you despite anything you could do, anything you have done, or anything you will do. He still loves you like the child that you are. God loves you and He chooses you. He doesn't look past you to someone that you consider better. He looks directly to you. He sees you and He sees your heart and He says, child, I choose you. You are the vessel in which I will use. You see, I was imperfect. I was broken. I should have died in that car accident that day, but I didn't. He said, I choose you. Yes, you are flawed. Yes, you are broken. Yes, you have messed up. No, you do not live like a typical Christian, but I will choose you and I will use you. And I believe looking back now, that little 17 year old Jeff, that God had a purpose. God had a plan. God knew that one day he would bring me to this place where I would be able to speak his words, I would be able to preach his word, I would be able to minister to teenagers, I would be able to have this channel that God had a reason and God had a purpose and he was gonna use me in some way. And we see this happen with Rahab the prostitute. Though she is flawed, though she is broken, though she is messed up, he said, I choose you and I will use you. And I will use you to bring forth the savior of the world. I want that to be an encouragement to you today. You're not too far gone. You have not messed up too much. God loves you. He chooses you. He has a purpose and a calling for your life. Just stop where you are. Bow your head and pray to Him and say, God, I give it all over to you. And actually follow through with your actions. Give it all to Jesus. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it inspired you, it encouraged you, that whatever you're going through today, you know that God loves you, He is for you, He has called you, and He wants to use you. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I release content just like this 
every single week and a shorter form every single Tuesday. All right, guys, love you. Keep living that bold life.